I've been wanting to get something off of my chest for a very long time. The only person who knows the whole story is my wife, and she didn't find out until we were already engaged. I didn't have anyone to talk to about this, because anyone who knows will think ill of me. It's been 15 years since these events took place, so I finally feel safe enough to talk about them anonymously. I had a really hard time in high school. Traumatic events in my childhood combining with hormonal changes didn't make me the most easygoing guy. I'd consider myself handsome now, but at the time I was five foot four, paler than fresh linen, and bone thin. My hobbies were all indoors and solitary in nature, and I found it difficult to make friends. I was the lone wolf that everyone warned you about. The only friend I had in the world was my creative writing teacher, Mr. Artis. He was an older guy, but I think he saw some of himself in me. He let me hide out in his office to avoid the jocks who taunted me daily. We would talk about writing and what we were reading, but most of the time we just talked about life. He had talked me down a few times. I was massively depressed. Suicidal even. I never went through with my plans because he was always there for me. He talked me through things that I thought no one else would understand. He understood the anger like no one else did. I hated the boys who would bully me. I hated the girls who would giggle at me as I walked by. I hated the other teachers who would turn a blind eye. Or the ones, like my gym teacher, who almost encouraged it. I think if it weren't for Mr. Artis, I wouldn't be here to tell my story. If I hadn't had him to talk to, to confide in, the self-loathing and anger and disgust would have bubbled over a lot sooner than it did, and I'm thankful for that. My junior year of high school, Mr. Artis got sick. They didn't tell us what he had, but he missed almost a month of classes. Not having anyone to talk to took a toll on me. I wasn't allowed in his office alone, so I also lost my hiding spot. Being around more often meant that I was an easier target. The assholes who would torment me day in and day out stepped up their game. Almost every day was torment. The bullying escalated from just taunting me to physically hurting me. I was punched square in the face one day. Another time, they slammed my hands in my locker and locked it shut. For those of you wondering, the metal bent around my fingers. On top of everything going on at school, my mom and dad had been fighting for a while. The week of the event, my mom left. Neither of my parents understood me. But my mom tried. Leaving me alone with my father is something that I still haven't forgiven her for. Fifteen years later. I know what I did was stupid. I know that it was the most drastic solution to something that would change over time. I didn't see it that way though. My dad kept a gun in the attached garage. It was loaded and tucked away for emergency situations, such as going to shooting ranges with his buddies. On Monday, I took the gun to my room. Dad didn't notice that it was missing because the drawer where it's kept is mostly empty. I posed with it in the mirror, practicing my icy stare. I knew right away what I wanted to do, although the thought of just using it on myself crossed my mind a few times. I didn't want to go out like that though. I wanted to leave a lasting impression. I counted the bullets in the gun 17 times. There were only three. I didn't know where to find more ammo, so I knew that I would have to make every shot count. One bullet was for John Carter, the asshole who filled my locker with urine-filled balloons. The second bullet was for Mike Wallace, 
who catfished me for weeks pretending to be a girl in our class, and then stood me up and made a mockery of me when I asked her out. The final bullet was for myself. I didn't want to go to jail, and I sure as hell didn't want to keep on living. On Friday morning, I tucked the gun into the waistband of my jeans, wearing a large hoodie to cover the gun's outline. Everything felt different, entering the school, like I was dreaming. The school itself almost looked like a set on a TV show, all conversation blurring like background murmurs. I suppose, looking back, that I had detached myself emotionally from the situation. I was calm and collected as I walked the halls, looking for my victims. I was early and classes hadn't started yet, but I figured John Carter would be in the gym shooting hoops. I made my way down the corridor that led to the athletics wing with determination. Harold! I heard a familiar voice and stopped. I turned to see Mr. Artis standing at his office door. Come on in. I need to speak with you. Hey, uh, it's good to see you. I awkwardly smiled back at him. Listen, I'm kind of busy right now. Can this wait? I was a man on a mission, and I didn't want to lose my momentum. No, Freda cannot. Come on in. His tone was kind, but the sternness was undeniable. He held the door open to his office and entered behind me. I asked him why he wanted to see me, but he simply stated that he wanted to talk. He asked me how things had been while he was away, but I didn't want to talk. The answers I gave him were short, cold, nothing like my usual self. I could tell that he knew something was up, but didn't want to push me. As I leaned back in the chair, wishing he would just leave me alone, my sweatshirt lifted slightly. Harold, Mr. Artis said, what on earth is that for? My cheeks turned bright red with embarrassment at being caught, and my heart started to pound in my ears. I knew it was over then. Mr. Artis was cool, but he was still a teacher. I assumed that the police and my parents would be called, that I would be kicked out of school and possibly sent to prison. I tried to speak, but I couldn't. Words got caught in the back of my throat. My eyes welling up with tears and I just broke. The weight of the world which I had been carrying finally broke my back and all I could do was sob. Mr. Artis didn't say a word, just waited for me to compose myself. When I finally did, I told him about everything that had been going on. I had never cried in front of him before, and the emotion that flowed out of me was surprisingly relieving. When the tears stopped and I had run out of things to say, Mr. Artis held out his hand for the gun. Are you going to have me arrested? I asked. No. What good would that do? He asked. I couldn't stop apologizing, but Mr. Artis's eyes were kind as he told me that everything was going to be okay. He told me that he understood what I wanted to do, but that it was the wrong solution. Comforted by his presence and finally being able to get everything off of my chest, I almost agreed with him. I gave Mr. Artis the gun, which he said that he would dispose of. I knew my dad would be livid that it went missing, but that was a problem for another day. I thanked Mr. Artis for everything and went to class. I was late to Spanish, but I told the teacher that I was in the nurse's office. Senora Miller didn't question it. My eyes were still red and my nose was runny. The rest of the class was uneventful. But just as the bell was supposed to ring, the principal came over the loudspeaker with an announcement. May I please have everyone's attention? Last night at 8.06 p.m., our school lost a beloved member of our faculty, Mr. Gideon Artis found peace last night, after a lifetime struggling with a hereditary disorder. There will be a service on Tuesday for anyone who would like to attend, and all counselors will be available all week for any student of the faculty member who would like grievance assistance. We will now have five minutes of silence for Mr. Artis. There were gasps around the classroom as the announcement played.
but Senora Miller quieted us down. We bowed our heads out of respect and sat in silence. I often ponder what happened that day. I wonder if Mr. Artis was a ghost, but seems so real. My mental state that day was far from sane, and it's possible that I hallucinated the whole thing. My subconscious finding a way to stop me from making a terrible mistake. The biggest mystery of all is that of the gun. I know I took it from my dad's drawer. I remember counting the bullets over and over again. I remember the way it felt heavy in my waistband. And I know that I handed it over to Mr. Artis. The next weekend, my dad went to the shooting range, and I was ready for hell when he couldn't find it. Except that he did find it. It was right there in the drawer, still loaded with three bullets. I can't explain the events that took place, but I guess a part of me wonders if Mr. Artis just wanted to look out for me. One final time. <laughs>